In my last video, I received my new 280 amp hour 3.2 volt cells, did some initial assessment of their state of charge, connected the BMS and the ISDT backgo monitor to begin the process of charging them at 14 volts, the first stage of the top balancing process. During this video, you'll see the top balancing process come to its conclusion. Okay, an update after three hours and 26 minutes of charging, as you can see, the cells have drifted apart through the charging process. We are still in 4S series mode charging uh, initially at 14 volts, and I've taken the battery pack off of the bench charger. The fourth cell, which currently reads 3.602 or 3 volts was up to 3.65 which gave me concern so I did shut down the, the charger and um, took a look at the variance between the cells and it increased from about 55 56 millivolts to 263 millivolts so clearly cell number four was delivered at a much much higher state of charge than the other three cells uh, again, we don't want to charge any one of these cells much beyond 3.65 volts. So I'm going to let this pack rest for a while. And I have a couple of options. I can continue charging in 4S and turn the amperage way down and allow the cells to continue to charge and hope that the two um, the two products that serve to balance the cells, the BMS and the ISDT battery monitor that you're looking at, can uh, close that gap a little bit. If that doesn't seem to be working with any rate of speed that is acceptable, I will disassemble the battery pack and we'll begin the first of a series of three charging sessions in parallel. At this point, um, I'm not particularly optimistic that these are three match cells. I'm still hopeful I can bring them back into balance. We'll see how closely matched they are after we finish the next three series of parallel charges. After about an hour and 45 minutes of charging the battery pack in series at 14 volts, cell number four, which was the highest voltage cell upon delivery, quickly achieved 3.65 volts. So at that point I stopped charging, uh, let the battery rest for about an hour and a half and, and I've now reassembled it in parallel. You'll notice that I've got two wire jumpers that I'm using uh, in place of two bus bars. There were only four bus bars provided by the vendor when the batteries were shipped. But the battery is assembled now in parallel and we have adjusted the bench controls on this power unit to 3.4 volts and we'll let the battery charge at 3.4 volts until the amps drop down to zero carefully monitoring this along the way this is stage two of my top balancing process to give you a visual about what I hope to accomplish I put together something of a chart the resting cell voltage upon delivery of the four cells is indicated in this second column. The cells arrived at approximately 3.28, 3.29, 3.29, and 3.33 volts per cell. So there was about a 50 millivolt difference. Having now put them together in series and charged them at 14 volts, and let them rest. The resting voltages were 3.3 for the first three cells and 3.46 volts for the fourth cell. That's a 160 millivolt difference. Obviously there was a greater gap in terms of the uh, cell voltages which again needs to be closed through the top balancing process. So at this point with the cells arranged in parallel and charging at 3.4 volts we'll hope to slowly move those three lower cells up to catch up with the higher voltage cell. We'll be watching this carefully and 
using uh, the voltmeter to check the individual voltages of the cell since as you can see now the um, the battery management system and the back go battery monitor uh, have been taken off. So there's no cell balancing going on now other than due to the fact the battery is connected in parallel and we have amps flowing freely between the four cells. Uh, we do hope to see some improvement. We'll let this go again charging uh, at 3.4 volts until we watch the amps drop down to practically nothing. As you can see they're at uh, 0.63 volts right now. Uh, when that drops to zero we can safely assume the battery pack has achieved 3.4 volts. We'll let it rest and the next two stages will uh, implement an increase in the charging voltage at 3.5 and then subsequently 3.6 volts to try to bring all four of those cells up to a very comparable level of high state of charge. I've been charging for a couple of days now and I've learned some important things. One, it's a slow process that I understood starting this. And number two, uh, it is important to take your time and learn as you go. So a couple things I have uh, quickly learned. The plugs that came with my benchtop power supply uh, for delivering the charge to the battery were really quite inadequate. Uh, at best the wire gauge on these are maybe 18 gauge and I wasn't carrying nearly enough amperage to the battery at the voltage level I was charging at. So for example at present we're charging up to 3.4 volts and the 10 amp benchtop charger is able to deliver 4 amps at that voltage. Well of course it's going to take more time the lower that amperage is. So what we can do is boost the voltage up to 3.5 and immediately see that amperage jump to 9, almost 10 amps, which is the capacity of this charger. And that will get us to the 3.4 voltage um, target that we're using as our first waypoint, if you will, much quicker. And what I have done to accomplish that is swap out the connections that came with the bench top to a much heavier wire gauge. And I'm using um, 12 gauge wire and made a couple of cables that could be connected from the bench top charger to the battery to again improve the ability to deliver more amps more quickly to the battery. Well, good morning. It's uh, a Saturday, and if you recall, I started the process of assembling the battery for the first time in series, charging it at 14 volts, and beginning the process of top balancing back on Monday. It's been fully six days, and as you can see, the battery pack is still assembled in parallel. And to give you a visual of what's been going on over these last six days, I've continued to work on the chart that I prepared. So to bring us back up to speed, upon delivery, the four cells were not balanced, one particularly cell four being well out of balance in relation to the other three. Cell number three came clearly at a very high state of charge relative to battery cells one, two, and three. So my initial plan uh, involved connecting them in series charging them at 14 volts and I did give them a one hour rest before I took these readings and they came in at 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 4 6 and these are not as refined as the values for the voltage I'm going to share here toward the end of the charging clearly cell number four was well above the other three in state of charge at 3.46 volts so the battery was disassembled from series, reassembled in parallel for the first charge cycle at 3.4 volts. I took these voltages after one hour rest. After many days, and to get to this stage, uh, I believe it took upwards of five and three quarters days uh, to get to 3.360, 3.360, 3.360, 3.360, 
and number four still just a shade high at 3.361 so at this point we moved from a 50 milliamp difference upon delivery when we connected them in series and charged them at 14 volts the difference between the four cells grew to 160 millivolts after the first stage of charging in parallel that was reduced to one millivolt which I was very excited to see so onward we go charging in the next phase at 4p parallel again 3.5 volts and this took considerably less time uh, I estimate it took just about seven eight maybe nine hours uh, to bring the pack from 3.4 volts per cell uh, to 3.5 volts. The readings came in at 3.352, 3.352, 3.352, and 3.352 with zero millivolts difference. And the major factor I believe there was that these cells were allowed to rest overnight. And I realize it's not um, great to leave these cells at a high state of charge for a very long time so uh, my plan is to very soon after taking one more measurement of the individual cell voltages to uh, assemble the pack in series and uh, use some of this uh, stored energy so we brought the pack to 3.6 volts within the last uh, couple of hours uh, I'm just waiting now for them to rest for about an hour and the next video segment will show me taking those final values and hopefully we'll have maintained this zero millivolt, millivolt difference which would certainly support the notion that they are in far better balance than when they arrived. Of course after that again I'll be attaching the pack cells in series and we'll take readings again on the entire uh, pack voltage. Uh, we'll be attaching a very large inverter uh, I'll show you that new induction cooktop and uh, I may even use that to draw some of the, the power out of this pack. As you can see I've now taken the bus bars off and we're going to take some voltage readings on each of these individual cells and hopefully you'll be able to get a view of my multimeter as I do this and hopefully we'll also see that after um, four charging stages for the purpose of top balancing these cells that after having charged them up to 3.6 volts and given them a one hour rest that we have a very very well balanced group of four 280 amp hour cells so here we go let's start with cell number four we're going to be going in reverse order cell number four was the high one it's reading 3.362 cell number three 3.361 cell number 2 3.361 and cell number 1 3.361 just teetering on 3.361 so as you can see we have achieved hopefully a very high state of charge and also a very good balance between these three sorry these four cells so we're at 3.361 3.361 3.361 and 3.362 so a one millivolt difference between the four cells let's hope that holds we'll get this reassembled in series and we'll get back together take a look at that back go battery monitor and see what kind of readings we get from it as far as the individual cell voltages are concerned and the total pack voltage in the time since it's taken me to put the pack together again in series another 25 minutes or so have passed so let's just do some individual cell monitoring using the voltmeter and see where we stand at this point Cell number four is at 3.360 volts. Cell number three, 3.358, so a two millivolt difference there. Cell number two, 3.356. And cell number one is at 3.358. So quickly looking at the 
back go and I'll give you folks a closer look at this in a second uh, there is some variation this uh, back go uh, battery meter is showing a 2 millivolt difference showing the lowest cell at uh, 3.352 volts that's cell number one and cell number four is at 3.354 volts I also take uh, some issue with this uh, battery meters state of charge assessment it's showing it at 80 percent and I have heard other reviewers state that they're not convinced that the state of charge indication on this particular meter is accurate for uh, such a large bank and I would uh, certainly caution that this probably shouldn't be used a much better indication is the resting voltage of the the pack and um, those cells being at 3.35 volts each more or less based on my research indicates that they are very near a 100 percent state of charge so we'll use that as our guide to have a look at what the battery meter is showing us specifically uh, it's indicating a 13.41 volt state of charge for the entire pack uh, it's indicating a difference of two millivolts as high as three at this point between any of the four cells, number one being the lowest at 3.352 volts, number four being the highest at 3.54 volts, uh, but that is actually equal to number two. So it's continued to rest and um, I'm a little bit concerned about the state of charge indication that this meter provides. It shows 80 percent state of charge. I don't believe that's accurate and I've heard other reviewers of this product indicate that they don't believe that's accurate either for uh, lithium iron phosphate technology. What I've read is that a 3.35 volt state of charge for any one cell is very near to, if not a 100% state of charge. So I'm going to accept that as the reality at this point. So it does seem as though we've made a lot of progress moving from upwards of 160 millivolts in variation between the cells when we first received them and started the process of top balancing and bringing them down to just a two millivolt difference. I have to do uh, tell you that right now the uh, cell balancing function uh, is activated on this battery meter and then we're also presuming there may be some cell balancing taking place uh, as activated by the BMS. So uh, we're going to next attach a large inverter and a load. Uh, might be my induction cooktop, maybe a, a small space heater to draw these batteries down and watch their behavior and see how close the cells remain in terms of their individual voltage through that process of drawing a load. Thanks for sticking with me through this process of top balancing my cells. In the next video we'll attach a couple of heavy loads to the battery and observe what happens to those cells, take some recordings, we'll assemble the pack in its final form to prepare it for installation within the solar power generator. Thanks as always for your likes, thanks for viewing, please subscribe if you haven't done so and we'll see you again soon.